Let's look at an example using housing prices. Economic theory tells us that housing prices are related to the size of the house, the number of rooms in the house, the quality of the schools in the neighborhood, whether or not there's an air quality issue in the neighborhood, whether or not it's a wealthy neighborhood or a poor neighborhood. These are all things that would affect house prices. So, when we draw a scatter plot, uh, where here on the x dimension we have a variable that is the number of rooms, uh, these are uh, uh, the average number of rooms in a house for all the houses in a certain neighborhood. That's why we see values like between whole numbers. So this house, in this neighborhood, houses have four and a half bedrooms. And here we have the average price of a house in the neighborhood. And again, the scale is, is a little bit meaningless for now. This is um, a log scaled variable. But what we see in general is that as the number of rooms increases, so in a neighborhood that has larger and larger houses, we see that those are the same neighborhoods that have higher and higher house prices. So we have a positive linear relationship. And we can kind of discuss whether or not this is a strong relationship or not. It's hard to do that just with a scatter plot alone. So I mean, if we had three different scatter plots of three different um, x variables, we might be able to say which variable looks like a stronger relationship and which doesn't. But by itself over here, it's quite hard to determine, actually, the strength of this relationship, which is precisely why we're going to use a statistic called the correlation statistic to quantify the strength of this relationship objectively. In order to build our correlation statistic, we first need to define something called of covariance, which is a measure of linear association between two random variables. Covariance quantifies the strength of a relationship. It essentially tells us whether or not two variables vary together, covary. We are going to define this, this term that appears in the summand as a cross product. What this cross product is, is for each i, so this is the sum over all i's, for each i, we are going to look at the deviation of xi to its mean and the deviance of yi to its mean and multiply those two deviations together. The multiplication of those deviations is going to be called the cross product. Now, let's look at uh, whether or not this cross product will be positive or negative. Essentially, the only uh, when these two when will these two terms be positive? That sorry, when would the cross product term be positive? That would occur if both of these two bracketed terms are positive, for example. So in that case, we have x i being greater than its mean, and for the same observation on the other variable y i is greater than its mean. So when both variables are above their means, the cross product will be positive. The other time when it's posi that it'll be positive is when both variables are below its mean. So if x is low and y is low, we'll also have a positive cross product term. The cross product terms will be negative, so the multiplication of these two brackets will be negative, when one is positive and the other is negative, or the other way around, when the first, when x is negative and y is positive. So in these cases, we have a low value of x and a high value of y, or the other way around, we could have a high value of x and a low value of y. In either case, the cross product term will be negative. Now let's think about what happens to covariance if x and y are positively related to one another. If x and y are positively related, what that means, so say the curve looks something like this, what that means is when we have high x values, we're likely to have high y values, and when we have low x values, we're likely to have low y values. In that case, we're going to be in the situation with a positive positive or a negative negative. In which case, when we take the summation of all the cross product terms, the covariance is going to be a larger number. 
So we're going to have a larger positive number when we have a positive relationship between the two variables, when the two variables co-vary positively. What about the case where we have a negative relationship between the two variables? Something like this. So in this case, we have low x and high y. So we have a negative and a positive. Or we can have high x and low y, a positive and a negative. So in these two cases, in this case, the cross product terms are going to be negative, And the sum of all the cross product terms is going to be negative. So when we have a negative relationship, the covariance between x and y is also going to be a negative value. And the more negative this relationship, the more negative it's going to be. So here we have an example. On the x dimension, we have the number of alders uh, at a particular plot of land. And on the y dimension, we have the uh, moisture content in that part of land. And each dot here represents uh, the combination between those two variables where the units of observation are you know, a plot of land. So in this plot of land, we have 35 alders and we have 19 on the moisture scale. So let's compute, let's look at these uh, different cross product terms. Over here, this point is, uh, has an x value of 67. The mean x is 50. So over here, x minus x bar, this distance over here is going to be positive. So we've got 67 minus 50, we've got 17. The y value is, say, 36, and the mean of y is 30. So here we've got y minus y bar is 6. In the covariance equation, what we would then do is multiply 17 times 6. So this point over here is going to add uh, 60 and 42, 102 to the summation that forms the numerator of the covariance. These points down here, and, and similarly, all the points in this quadrant that are above the mean in both variables, so we're going to call this quadrant 1, are going to add positive values to the cross product term. Let's look at this value over here. This value is below the mean on the x. So x minus x bar. Well, that's going to be, in this case, maybe this is 45. So we've got 50 minus, 45 minus 50. We've got minus 5 here. But it is above the mean in the y dimension. It's probably like 3 units above the mean. So y minus y bar is going to equal 3. And when we take the cross product, the answer the cross product will be minus 15. And similarly, all terms in quadrant 2, all points in quadrant 2, will add a negative number to the summation. Same with any point in quadrant 4. These are also going to add negative. And in quadrant 3, these are all going to add positive terms, because we're going to have a negative on e the, each of the deviations will be negative, so when we multiply them together, it'll add a positive value to the to the cross product. Uh, where are the points located on this plot? We see that most of the points are located in quadrant one and quadrant three, and therefore the sum of the cross products is going to be positive because in this case all of the cross products are actually going to be positive too. So there we say that these two vari variables uh, have a positive covariance. In this case all of the terms are in quadrant 2 and 4 and we said that all of these cross products for these points are going to be negative and therefore the sum of all the cross products is negative and the covariance will be negative as well. In this case, we've got about an equal number of points in each quadrant. We've got, uh, you know, 
four points in positive covariance quadrants one and three and we've got six points so slightly more points two and four in the negative quadrants so sorry one and three are the positive quadrants and two and four are the negative quadrants so in this case when we add up all of the cross product terms our covariance value is going to be close to zero because we've got about some we've got some points adding positive and about the same amount adding negative and in that case when the covariance statistic is close to zero we say there's no covariance and the spatial pattern is one where it's difficult to determine if there's a positive relationship or a negative relationship